and, and to sl slip in there in some way, shape, or form, okay, and to tie you and connect you still with some form of uncleanness, okay? All right? First thing that they had to do there, they had to recognize that something wasn't right there, okay? When you know that you are doing the things that you should be doing, okay, now, if you, you know, if you go home and you live, you live in a double life, then you, you know, that's apparent, okay? That's obvious what you, what, why things are there. But sometimes there are certain things that creep in unaware. And, and, you know, and sometimes you can't put your finger on it. But I believe that, you know, God is bringing us at a point and a place where he wants us to clean house. And there are some things that we're going to do this week where God is going to expose the things that have been behind the scenes that the enemy has been, you know, keeping a connection, keeping an open door in our lives, keeping something that, you know, even though it's coming in, it's going out. Even though you're blessed, you still, it seems like, you know, you're not blessed. Okay? Um, the first thing they had to do was they had to recognize. When they saw the leprosy, they had to recognize. Okay? When you know things aren't going right, you have to recognize there's something that is there. There's an open door somewhere. There's something that is giving access to the enemy to cause some kind of curse to come into our, our lives, okay? There's something going on that is, that is causing us, you know, to always be fussing and fighting in the house. There's something that is going on that is causing my children to act like this. There's something that is going on behind the scenes, okay? Something unclean has come in unaware okay and i'm gonna tell you this in this day and time um and i'm not gonna you know really get into this a whole lot today but we have to really watch and guard the things that we take in through our eyes and through our ears okay because there are things that are being masked and things that are you know subliminally that are being um pushed through different forms of media, television, movies, music, and so forth. And what is going on, let me, let, and let me just say this, because this is how the enemy comes in un unaware sometimes. So I'm going to say this so that you guys, you can look at this on your own. Maybe one day we'll have a class or you, we'll teach on it and all that kind of stuff. But especially pertaining to our children, okay, and even us, okay, there are things that are subliminally being... Uh, fed to us that are giving the enemy an access into our lives, okay? There are certain things that are hidden in graphics of movies, okay, that are subliminally, see, this is what you have to understand about, and see, remember we're talking about uh, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. And so there are things that the enemy is, is you know, there are things in our conscious mind that he is feeding us, Okay, because we are, you know, we are looking at certain things and we're allowing ourselves to see certain things and hear certain things. But then there's the subconscious mind where those things, there are some things that are bypassing our conscious mind, okay, and going into our subconscious, okay. And your subconscious is where all of your, you know, your daily habits come out of, okay, the things that program you to be who you are. All right. So I said all that to say this. There are a lot of messages that are being subliminally uh, pushed in, in, in different forms of media. There is music that your children listen to that has uh, what's called uh, back mass messages, which are you know, things that are played at a certain speed or a certain uh, backwards that are, have hidden messages in there that are feeding certain things to your children with the music that they listen to, okay? So there are even certain things, and I will say, and I'm just going to leave it at that, in some of our political leaders, where there are messages that are hidden in, in the things that they are giving in their speeches. Okay, so there are things that are being fed to us that is programming us, okay, in an unaware way where it's giving access to the enemy in our lives, all right? Certain things that are coming through music that is feeding our children, certain appetites and desires to do certain things. And then you're sitting there wondering, why is my child acting like this? It's because of something that they have. Even in the most innocent of cartoons, there are things, okay? 
So I'm not going to go any further into that today, but you look it up, you do the research yourself, and um, it'll speak for itself. But my thing is to bring awareness to you so that, because this week we're going to be looking at some things that, you know, we're going to be examining as one of the things that we get into in the next, uh, in verse 37. The priest came in to examine, okay, the source of this leprosy, the source of this unclean thing that had gained access into that house, okay? And so we're going to be doing some examining this week, okay? Um, but I'll get into that in a little bit. But the first thing is that you got to recognize, you know, that something isn't right, okay? You got to know, you know, don't just, don't just brush it off. Don't just overlook it. Don't just say, well, that's just him being him or her being her or, you know. You got to understand that something is going on behind the scenes. The enemy is always working behind the scenes, okay? And that's what you got to understand. And then you have to begin to examine yourself, you know. In order to, to clean house, you have to examine yourself, you know. Look at what you are doing. Look at what you're looking at. See, some of you, you, you need to get rid of some of the magazines that you've been participating in. Some of you need to get off of some of the websites that you've been going to. Some of you are doing certain things where you're inviting. You're inviting the uncleanness in. And so we have to examine ourselves, examine our homes. What's going on in our homes? What's coming through the tube? What's coming through the computer? You know? What's coming through the, the different forms of social media that, that, that we're participating in? What's coming through? See, the, all of these things are doors or access points, okay, where you, you, you allow the enemy to come in, okay? You give access to him. So we have to look at, you know, the things that are going on in our home. Fussing and fighting all of the time. All of these things are tracked. These are unclean things that are attracting certain unclean spirits into our midst. And as, as born again people, you don't get possessed by the enemy, but you can be oppressed and influenced. Okay? So, examine. The church needs to be examined, you know? Collectively, you know, when we come here, over the next seven days, we're going to be doing some uh, fasting and prayer, okay? And the priests, as we read earlier in verse uh, 38, he went through this process for seven days where he examined the leprosy, and then he came back to see, you know, what was the result after he did his examination and did certain things, okay? And so for the next seven days, uh, as soon as church is over with until next Sunday service, uh, we're going to examine our households. We're going to examine our lives, our households, and, you know, even our church life when we come here because there are certain things that we need to do when we come here, which I'll get into in a moment. But we're going to examine the things that are going on in our homes. You know, we, some of us have gotten caught up into too much of, you know, the things that we watch on TV or the, the movies that we watch and so forth, and we are becoming uh, desensitized and oblivious to the, the obvious things that is really going on there. And so um, we're going to fast the next seven days. What I'm going to ask you guys to do is to fast one meal out of the day. And you, I'm going to leave it up to you as to decide which meal that you fast. So uh, one meal out of the day, I'm going to ask you to fast. And I know you ladies, you're involved in a fasting at, from 9 to 3 at night. <clears throat> but that doesn't affect your meals. <laughs> so uh, not, uh, one meal per day out of the week for the next seven days, I'm going to ask you to fast. And um, also what I'm going to ask you to do while you are doing this fast, okay, don't just fast and say, oh, I'm fasting, okay? But um, I want you to review Isaiah chapter 58, 
and look at the, the things that it talks about in fasting there. There are some bonds or some bands of wickedness that need to be loosed out of our houses. There's some oppression that is going on that, that we, our children, uh, the church needs to be free from. Okay? There are certain things that, you know, like I said, that the enemy has gotten in there and has hindered us, you know, from walking in the fullness of what we should. And so we're going to spend some time as we are fasting, spend that time praying. Whatever the meal is that you choose to do it, okay, do it at a time where you can spend some time before God praying so that you can seek God as to the things that are going on in your house, in your life personally, okay, so that we can examine what is going on, okay, what place that we might be giving the enemy through through words that we speak, through actions or habits that we have, through things that we are watching. I want you to go and check out all the video games that your children have. Okay? I want you to check out the music that is on their iPods. Check out their phones. Check out. Check it out. Check out everything, okay, and, allow, and as you're doing this, I believe that the Holy Spirit will lead you exactly to whatever it is that's going on. He will direct you. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to do that during this week for the next seven days. Um, that means, you know, during this time when you're fasting, <clears throat> um, that means you're not indulged in, you know, the, the things that you normally would. You're not sitting down watching TV while you're fasting. You're not sitting down, you know, um, on the Internet just um, sight hopping while you're doing this, you know, unless this is just something strictly for work or business or whatever, that's another issue. But just for your, um, your pleasure, your, you know, you know, all of that kind of stuff, social media, all of that, everything. You need to look at everything that might be giving the enemy access points in our lives, okay? This is what I want you guys to do this week. So one meal per day, you decide the meal, but, um, Spend that time in, in prayer before God. And, um, and, and, you know, this is one of the reasons why Dr. Ellis started to fast with you guys, the ladies, on, um, on the last Women's Fellowship. Because this fast is to, to expose and to remove the things that have been hindering our faith. And that's, that's what this is, you know. There are certain things, so we're involving everybody in it now, okay. Especially, you know, the... Uh, the fathers and the husbands in the household and the mothers and so forth, we need to look at the things that has been given the enemy access to our children, okay? We need to look at the things that have been given the enemy access to our finances, to our bodies, to our health, to, uh, you know, things that have been oppressing us at night while we sleep. We need to look at all of those things, and I believe that God will expose, because when light comes on the scene, it always exposes the darkness. So, Examine your homes. Examine through fasting and prayer for the next seven days. Um, in verse 40 and 41, he says, He shall command that they take out the diseased stones and cast them into the unclean place outside the city. So when things are revealed, okay, where the enemy has had access, he says, remove those things out of your life and out of your household. He says, remove them. And, you know, they had a certain, during those days, they had a certain place where they took the unclean things. Kind of like we do now with the, the, the landfill, or the dump, and so forth. We take our trash there, all right? But they had a certain place that was away from the camp, okay, that they took all of the unclean things. That's why the lepers had to dwell outside the city in a certain place because they were considered unclean. And so he says, Take out the disease or the leprous stones and cast them into an unclean place outside the city. And then he says in verse 41, He shall cause a house to be scraped within, round about, and the plaster or the mortar that is scraped off to be emptied out in the unclean place outside the city. So the dust, remember we talked about dust earlier. The dust, okay, the dust that was stirred up, that dust of that of sin that opened the door to that uncleanness, you know? Whether you were aware or unaware, okay, it opened the door up. But he says, even the dust shall be scraped off and taken to the unclean place. So God wants us to get the house clean. Look at the person beside you and say, clean house. All right? 
Now hold your place there. I'm going to ask you to turn to Matthew chapter 12. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Matthew chapter 12. Um, it says this in uh, verse, hmm, verse 43. So we just read in, uh, you know, in Leviticus chapter 14, verse 40 and 41, how we are to remove the unclean thing from our house. Okay. So. There is a, a process that is involved in moving the unclean thing, getting the uncleanness out. And then there's something else that we ought to also do. And in uh, verse 43, it says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, okay? Well, when you get, you know, get anything unclean out of your house, because you have to understand when there's something unclean, there, there's an unclean spirit that is attached to it, okay? The enemy loves to attach itself to those things. They, they're, they're magnets for it, Okay? So this is why I say we have to really look at the things that we have in our houses, you know. You know, things that if you travel to another country and you, got, you brought back some kind of artifact or something that, you know, that they had in that country and they worship, okay, or, you know, something that came from some false god or even, even toys, even video games, even the things that we bring into our home, okay. Those are things that are magnets that attract certain types of spirits, all right. It says... And I know this, I, believe me, I know, from my own experience as a child. And it says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. See how he's taking ownership? Huh. The audacity. He says, and when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Okay. And then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be also with this wicked generation. Now I'm going to read this out of the uh, message translation. And it, it, it nails it right on. It says, when a defiling evil spirit is expelled. And you see, this is what you have to understand. Right? That sin that you've been participating in. That, that access of the enemy is, is only a spirit that is here to defile you, okay? To, to say that it has con, uh, control over you, bragging rights. It says, when a defiling evil spirit is expelled from someone, it drifts along through the desert looking for an oasis. Some unsuspecting soul, it can be devil. <laughs> when it doesn't find anyone, it says, I'll go back to my old haunt. On return, it finds a person spotlessly clean. See, they, they got the stone out. They got the unclean thing out, but vacant. See, on return, it finds the person spotlessly clean, but vacant. It then returns, or then it runs out, and it rounds up seven other spirits more evil than itself. Why? Because even though the house was clean, guess what? It was vacant. So you might clean out the house, but it is important that you replace that with the word. Okay? It's important that you replace that with, with communion with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So it's not just enough to, un to clean the house out. Okay? How many of you have ever been out in your yard, and you know you're trying to get your yard looking nice and tight and fresh and green? You know, You know how you do. All right, and so, you know, when you, when you mow your grass, you want to see the lines in it and everybody rides by and they see the waves in your yard. <laughs> All right, but look, sometimes, you know, weeds or, or crabgrass and all of those things will grow up in your, in your yard if you don't watch it. And so what happens? You pull the weeds out, you pull the crabgrass out, but guess what? There's a hole that's there. You got the, the, the thing you didn't want out, but guess what? What will happen if you don't put some grass seeds there. That crabgrass seed is going to blow in or it's going to come and it's going to fill that same spot, okay, where you had just uh, emptied it out. 
And it's the same thing. When we clean the house, we have to replace it with the word. See, that spirit, he came back to that house and he saw that it was clean. Okay? He saw that, you know, that you got that thing out. But he says, aha, the word isn't there. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go get some of my buddies that's even stronger than me. And we're going to go back there and we're going to take over. All right? And, this is, and it says, on return it finds a person spotlessly clean but vacant. And it then runs out and rounds up seven other spirits more evil than it. And they all move in. <laughs> whooping it up, and it says that person ends up far worse off than he'd ever, than he'd never gotten clean, than if he'd never gotten clean up in the first place. That's what this generation is like. You may think that you've cleaned out the junk from your lives and gotten ready for God. You're born again, okay? But he says, but you weren't hospitable to my kingdom message. That's the word. And it says, and now all the devils are moving back in. And so, now let's turn back to uh, Leviticus 14. And it says, um, back in verse 42, right? After they've cleaned out the unclean stones and the, the dust, and it says in verse 42, and they shall put other stones in the place of those stones. See, they didn't just leave the holes in the wall, okay? They replaced it with other stones. And see, this is why when you get something out of your, your life, this is why the renewing of the mind is, is so important. Okay, renewing the mind is just not, you know, memorizing scriptures and being able to speak them. Okay, renewing the mind is where you've replaced, okay, that old way of thinking, that old way of living with the word of God now. Okay, this is what this whole process is. And he says, they shall put other stones in the place of those stones, and he shall plaster the dust with fresh mortar. Okay, fresh mortar. All right, so that comes from... Daily communion with God, daily communion with the Holy Spirit, fresh oil, okay? And so, they had to examine or recognize that something was going on that wasn't right in the house. They had to examine, why is this? Where is this coming from? They had to figure it out, remove the unclean thing. And then they had to replace it, okay, with something else that would take the place of that unclean thing so that it does not come back later and is even worse than it was before. All right, now let's turn to, uh, let's go down further in the chapter. And after they've gotten all the leprosy out, they've replaced the stones and so forth. And you can read this whole account. We're going to pick up in verse 49. And this is a final cleansing process that it goes through. It says in verse 49, talking about the priest now, he shall take to clean or to cleanse the house two birds, cedar wood, scarlet material, and hyssop. This is, you know, this whole procedure here is similar to the, uh, the atoning that took place once a year with the scapegoat and all of that and so forth. This is a similar procedure of, of uh, cleaning uh, that is taking place here. And it says, And he shall take the cedar wood and the hyssop and the scarlet material and the living bird and dip them in the blood of uh, the slain bird and in the running water. Remember how the other Wednesday we were talking about the importance of running water? St uh, water that doesn't move has no ability to clean. It contains germs. It holds germs. He says, Place it in the running water and sprinkle the house seven times. And he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the, the bird, the running water, the living bird, the cedar uh, wood, the hyssop, and the scarlet material. But he shall let the living bird go out into the city, into the open field, just like the scapegoat. And so shall he make atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. All right? So when we talk about cleaning the house, you know, us personally, our homes naturally, 
Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to end here for today. And we are all very familiar with this. But we're not, you know, we're not sacrificing any birds and releasing any birds for the cleaning of our house. But this is what we do. So after you've gotten all of the, the unclean things out, you know. He says, um, verse 26, chapter 11, 1 Corinthians. He says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So Jesus, you know, his blood was shed so that um, all of our sins will be remitted. So that the things that have caused us to be unclean, so that that blood will wash us up. Okay, and he says, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, and this is how we co can collectively, you know, as a, a church body, clean ourselves up. He says, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Okay, and this is what we're doing this week. All right. And so, you know, and every time that we take communion, you should be doing this, right? Um, examining our attitudes, examine everything, you know, our, our love walk, everything. Okay? Those things open up doors as well. He says, but let a man examine himself. So the same thing that they were doing back here in Leviticus 14, okay? We're examining our households. We're examining ourselves, our habits. We're examining everything that's going on, and we're, and we're, we're judging ourselves so that uh, we can get the unclean thing or the things that aren't right out. He says, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But he that eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So now, after we've gotten the unclean thing out, we take communion over it so that Whenever you take communion over it, you, and you, you, what you're doing is you're placing the body and the blood of Jesus between you and that unclean thing that you're not going to go back. You would have to trample over the body and the blood of Jesus to go back and to pick that thing back up. Okay? And so when we, after we, and we'll do this after we have, um, you know, gone through this period of, of, of examining ourselves and examining our households and so forth, then we'll come together with uh, communion. And uh, we'll take communion to, you know, to as a, an act of faith of moving forward to not go back and to pick that thing back up, lest it become worse in our lives than it was before. Okay? So I'm going to stop right there for today. So um, I have uh, <laughs> given you a lot of information, a lot of things to... Uh...